So as you can see, it's got a trapezoidal exhaust versus the turndown that's on the standard LTZ turbo. And of course it happens to say Sonic RS on the side, on the back, whatever. Uh, this one is kinetic blue, which is a little bit darker than the hyper blue, which I actually like. All right. So here we are on the inside of the RS. There are a few differences between an RS and that LTZ turbo that we looked at before. Let me show you around the interior of this one. I'll point out a few things, things that I like, uh, things that are questionable. Actually, there's not much questionable in here because quite frankly, there's not much in here that's different from pretty much any other Sonic. So let's do the walkthrough, look around, whatever you want to call it, and then we'll uh, do like an outside differentiation between the two. Starting here, you have the RS. It's a semi-flat bottom steering wheel. It's not truly flat, but it is flatter than standard. And it steers fine. I mean, it's not much different than the standard car, in my opinion. They went with the piano black finish on the center stack here versus the aluminized look or the cheap plastic look. Six-speed manual gearbox, and it does have the reverse lockout ring, which... In my opinion, I actually like that better than the setup on my Mustang where you have to push the stick down and then over and up. I believe Volkswagens used to use the same thing. So the seats, they're embroidered with the RS logo and they are a leather suede cloth kind of a feel. However, if you see, as the sun kills the white balance, they're very flat and very wide. They're more for comfort than they are for handling, but they're okay. The side bolsters feel all right, but the bottom of the cushion actually, even though it looks like it comes up, actually, I think this cushion kind of falls away when your legs are on it if you're a taller dude like me. So yeah, otherwise it's pretty much identical to any of the other ones I've ever shown you. You have the motorcycle inspired dashboard there. First thing I'd like to say is that this car needs more power. 134 horsepower or 139 horsepower, whatever it is, is not enough. It does motivate it because it is quite a small vehicle, but it, this car is about the size of a Fiesta. And if a Fiesta ST can have damn near 200 horsepower, they could bump this up to 175, 180 horsepower, have a little pocket rocket car, and have something that's almost a competitor to the Fiesta ST. So yeah. We're gonna do some driving and I'll give you a few remarks as to how I feel about it as we go. So, here we go. I gotta say the acceleration is not mind blowing or anything like that. In first and second gear, when you get up to about 3,800 RPM, you really feel it start to pull. But once you get into like third and fourth gear, even at about 4,000 RPM, there's just not enough turbo and not enough motor. If it, again, had about another 60 horsepower, this thing would just be a little freaking rocket. As to the shifter, I actually like the shifter. I think it's pretty, pretty secure, pretty straight into each gear. Doesn't really wander around as much as say a Colorado shifter does. And the clutch pedal, I actually prefer the engagement on this one more than I do on the new Camaro SS's. I think it has a little bit more feel to the clutch pedal. That could just be me and I could just be insane, but uh, that's my opinion. Again, it's not a super fast car, but I'm sure just from the little on-ramps and the roundy brownie bouts that I took, that it could definitely handle the extra power. So I would love to get my hands on one that's been tuned or upgraded. I tried selling this guy one that had the upgraded engine package in it, but he didn't want to pay the extra two grand. Quite frankly, I would have paid the two grand to get the lowering suspension, the engine toys as they're called, as well as a sunroof, but to each their own. But uh, yeah, we'll keep driving it and see if my opinion of it changes over the long haul. Okay, one more thing that I'm noticing here, and it could just be because I got big old clod hopper stump feet piece things. Uh, the clutch pedal is a little too close to the dead pedal for my taste, as well as the fact that it uh, is just barely below the level of the clutch pedal. So I have to readjust both of my feet before I'm even able to uh, get the clutch pedal pushed in all the way. So again, that could be partially due to the fact that I'm missing half my foot, so I drive with the back half of my foot now, or it could also just be because this is a tiny itty bitty car and the pedals are too damn close together. You decide. 
I'm going for the ladder. I think the pedals are just too damn close together. And the dead pedal's way too big. They could have made the dead pedal about three quarters of its actual size, moved the clutch over just a touch. And it would actually also help aid with heel-toe driving. So, yeah, um, bad design choices, but what can you do? So, I'll let you know if anything else bugs me. One good thing about a small turbo engine and the fact that it's got some weird ass gearings in it you can see that we're at about 75 miles an hour i'm in a 70 mile an hour zone so don't yell at me but at 3200 rpms it's actually still keeping the turbo kind of spooled up so i don't have to downshift in order to gain speed quickly so that's a good positive thing about having a small turbo engine like this that's always on boil now in the automatic, it would have downshifted two gears, but in this manual, it actually just kinda, kinda just goes. So that's nice to see. So anyways, I'm on the home stretch towards the dealership now, so I thought I would do my conclusion before I got there. And I really like this car. When you compare it to its competitors, I'm talking domestically, obviously, what would be a good competitor to it in the foreign market? Probably like the Corolla, uh, possibly the Honda Fit and domestically it's the Sonic is bigger than a Fiesta but it's smaller than a Focus so I like that it splits the difference uh, the Dart is a non-competitive vehicle it doesn't matter because that's being killed off this month anyway so I'm same thing with the 200 and other Chevy products I mean a Cruze technically you could get one for the same kind of money as this car but this car in the RS trim with the manual transmission is probably as fun as you can get from the General Motors Corporation at this time. The Fiesta ST is faster by far, but because it's a smaller car, it has a much choppier ride. So this is a kind of car I could very easily and happily daily drive. If you're looking for that mixture of comfort, convenience, a little bit of power, this car does all of that. If you're looking for a rocket, get the Fiesta. If you're looking for something foreign, um, a Honda. But uh, yeah, if you want just a good daily driver, because I drove this from the top of Pennsylvania to here and I'm getting 35 miles to the gallon right now. And that's at an average of about 75 miles an hour. So can't really beat that, kids. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any comments, leave those down below. If you'd like to see him, if you'd like to see something else, please let me know what that is. I'll be happy to try to get it done for you. Obviously, I haven't been able to do as many videos lately. I've been moving, my legs have been bothering me, lots of different reasons, but I'm gonna try to get a couple up this week. Uh, sorry again that you missed a day, but not much I could do about that because I was in Pennsylvania and no time to edit and upload a video. So, until I talk to you again, see ya.